Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wassacrook and I'm going to review all the latest movies in theaters as well as any as you guys recommend, whether they be recent films or old school movies. Now before we get into today's episode, don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe button to the channel. And also don't forget to follow us on any of the social media outlets you see below. Now today's review is going to be about the movie Beautiful Boy. Now when this film came out uh, at uh, TIFF, um, which is the Toronto uh, Film Festival, uh, a few months back. There was much critical acclaim coming out of it with Timothy Chalamet and Steve Carell's performance. And you will see that also Timothy Chalamet got nominated for a Golden Globe for this particular performance as well. Um, the The movie itself, the trailer, looks tough, it's tough to watch and it looks heartbreaking. And um, it basically looks like we're finally going to, not finally, but... Steve Carell has been getting into more of the dramatic roles. Um, he's finally kind of pulled back on the comedic uh, roles itself and has gone definitely more into the dramatic roles, such as um, Foxcatcher, and uh, he's going to be in Vice. That's more of a comedic role, actually. But um, Steve Carell really is starting to turn up the, dra the dramatic um, roles, it, and, and, he's, and he's crushing them. He's doing a fantastic job in the roles. And so Steve Carell's really kind of coming into his own as, as a dramatic actor. And Timothy Chalamet, this this kid has come out of nowhere over the last year. Um, I mean, he was he had great... Um, I mean, Call Me By Your Name, I wasn't a particular fan of the film, but he was fantastic in it. He also was in Lady Bird. Um, so this this kid is, is, at a young age, him and Lucas Hedges uh, are kind of like the two premier... Um, young actors right now who are climbing up the ranks in every film that they do. They are always just knocking it out of the park. Um, for me, I mean, he was fine in Little Lady Bird, but to me this was my first real kind of um, in-depth look at, at Timothy Chalamet as an actor, and of course with Steve Carell playing the role as well. I was actually real excited to see this movie, even though it looked like it was going to be a tearjerker. Now basically what the plot of this film is it covers the true story of uh, David and Nick Sheff. Um, they basically wrote two books, one um, from Nick's perspective and one from David's perspective, about uh, Nick's, um, uh, I, I can't remember how many years it was, I don't know, it was, it was, it was quite a long time, um, but basically it was through his um, addiction of crystal meth and how it took a toll on his life as well as David's life and the family um, its, uh, life itself. Uh, so basically, that's that's the general plot of the film is just going through the the addiction of crystal meth between um, Nick and then of course the toll it takes on himself and uh, the rest of his family, including his father David. Uh, what works in this film, obviously without question, outstanding performances from Steve Carell and Timothy Chalamet. Um, they are are amazing. In this film, Timothy Chalamet, uh, his his reputation is, is 100% uh, proven in this role. He kills his role as Nick. It is a heartbreaking role. There are times where you just wanted to reach in and slap him um, because of the stuff that he was doing. And he really just goes through a phenomenal transformation um, from, from this kid who... Um, looks like he had everything going for him. I mean, he's, he was an aspiring writer. He was a great drawer. Um, and he just had everything going for him. He, he, he had, you know, um, he applied for six colleges and got into all of them. I mean, this kid had everything going for him. But he just, for some reason, got into crystal, crystal meth. Uh, and then his whole life just went to hell. You know, and then, of course, you have, you have David's, you know, Steve Carell's David character, who... Um, was just so proud of his son, and he's just a father who is unwilling to let it go. He's he's trying so hard to save Nick, um, even though at at the cost of of a uh, fail failing his second marriage, um, and and even his his two other children, they kind of take a backseat to it all because he's so focused and stressed and heartbroken on um, what Nick has put him and his family through. And just trying to keep Nick alive. And trying to figure out and find out what this disease does uh, of addiction. And what crystal meth does to a person. And how he can kind of understand 
what Nick's going through so he could try to help Nick in all ways possible. It's a phenomenal performance by both these actors. And um, they are definitely, if if not for the, if not for seeing this movie for for what the movie delivers, which is a message about addiction, just to go out of your way to see these two performances themselves is definitely something you need to see. Uh, also, standout performances you have um, Mara Tierney. Uh, she plays uh, Karen Barber. She's um, Steve Carell's second wife in the film. Uh, I've always loved her, and in, in, uh, if anyone watched the show ER, she was fantastic in that film. Uh, or in that show, and she does a solid supporting role in this as well, especially one particular scene near the end of the film, um, that once you guys watch it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I thought she was kind of playing it a little too, um, quiet or reserved in the role, but that's just because that's how her character was, and then we finally get to this one point in the movie where she really just lets it out, and it is such a great performance by her also. Um, also, uh, Amy Ryan, um, for, for the people who are Office fans, I was laughing, even though this is a very sad film, I was laughing so hard when you found out that Amy Ryan plays Steve Carell's uh, <coughs> um, uh, ex-wife, uh, what her name is, uh, Vicky, Vicky Chef in this film, because anyone who knows The Office knows that Steve Carell and Amy Ryan um, are, get together in The Office. They're, 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 they're the perfect match to want to get one another in The Office. So to see that they are now ex-wife and ex-husband in this film was a beautiful Office Easter egg that I personally enjoyed. And I hope everyone else who's an Office fan enjoys it as well. Um, but she, she gives a great performance in her small role as well. Every time she is on screen, she kills it in her role. And like I said, those, those four care actors do a great job, and even the children in the film as well. Um, uh, I'm spacing on, on their names right now, and I don't see them on my sheet. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Christian Convery, he plays Jasper, and Oakley Bull, she plays Daisy. They do great in the jo in their small job as well. I mean, they're young kids, and they do such a great job in their role. Um, but like I said, performances are fantastic all around. But what also works is showing the struggle and the heartbreak and the damage drug abuse does to you as a person, but not only just to you, but to your family as well. Um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a, like I said, a heart, I can't say it enough, it's such a heartbreaking story. The story of Nick and, and all the stuff he goes through and how you see how much he wants to kick it, um, but he just can't do it. And there's times where, yeah, he, he does kick it for a little while and you think everything's going to go great, but then you realize there's still an hour left of the movie and you know shit's going to go wrong again. Um, but watching just the transformation of a happy family with Carell and, uh, or with, with David and, um, and Karen and, and, and the kids to just kind of almost them almost being, uh, not necessarily strangers in a house, but just that. You can see the strain it takes on them as a whole to the point where this almost ruins David's second marriage, um, him trying to take care of Nick. And it's just, just how horrible the whole situation is for everyone involved. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's what works in the film is phenomenal performances and just showing how shitty uh, being a drug addict is, not only for the person, but for the people that are connected to him. Now, what does not work in the movie, we, there are quite a bit of things that don't work outside of the, the things that I just said that were fantastic. <clears throat> the first 20 minutes, the editing is horrific. I mean, there were times where I couldn't tell if we were jumping all over different time, places in time. I couldn't tell if this thing that was going on with Nick was happening like right now in the story or if it was happening in the future or in the past. It just was jumping all over the place. It was very scatterbrained in the first 20 minutes. Um, after the first 20 minutes, they finally kind of get in their lane and are starting to follow it uh, throughout. And it is a lot smoother after that and it's a lot easier to understand the story. But it felt like the first 20 minutes was just all over the place. Um, the pacing, because of that, is is kind of very up and down. Um, it just, it goes from zero to a hundred in two seconds and then it goes back down to zero again. Um, so the editing and pacing is all over the place in the, in this movie. And then also the soundtrack and score, they, they really, the director, um, 
really just wanted to make a huge emphasis on the music soundtrack in this to the point where it is overly loud and it just overtakes the scene and not all the songs work at all. There are certain scenes like, like the Beautiful Boys song that works very, very well. But there are other songs where it's just, it's cringeworthy to the ears and you just, like there's parts where I really, if I could, I would have turned it down if I had the ability to do so because I just did not want to hear that music anymore and it just kept blaring and blaring and blaring for a solid minute to two minutes. And it's it's a real annoying aspect of the film. And there's plenty of songs that do that throughout the movie. Um, but there's one in particular that I'm just like, oh my god, shut this off. Um, so yeah, I mean, there and, and there's also um, certain uh, story contexts that are left out of the lead characters that make them come off cold. Uh, for instance, why um, David and Vicky Chef got divorced. Um, was it because of Nick? Was it because of something else? Um, well, actually, it wasn't because of Nick, because they, they got divorced right when Nick was rather young. But, I mean, there's just there's there's this animosity between them. I mean, obviously, they're divorced, so there's animosity there. But there's just certain contexts between their characters where they just come off so hateful towards each other that you kind of want to wit- no, find out what happened to them to lead them down this path. Um, there's also certain elements where obviously, um, and obviously this is, this is the struggle of, of the addiction that falls through on David, where he just starts turning off his emotions to his entire family um, because of what's happening to Nick. And it's, it's just sometimes, like, for people who aren't fully following the context of the film, it doesn't work, and it's not at any fault of Steve Carell. Steve Carell does phenomenal but in terms of the way the story is written and how it's told, it kind of makes Steve Carell's character come off kind of as like a dick because he just kind of turns, in a sense, on um, on uh, Karen and, and Jasper and Daisy. Not that he like lashes out at them or any way, but he almost kind of becomes an addict himself in a sense that he's addicted to trying to fix um, Nick to the point where he kind of turns off them off in the process. And it's just certain things like that where it just doesn't it doesn't add up all the way, and it can be frustrating for people who are watching the film, especially for Steve Carell's role. Um, other times, too, is it, it, for the most part, it only really shows the bad times that Nick are going through, and not really his transformation to the good times, outside of maybe like a five-minute montage where it shows that he beats it for a certain amount of time. But, I mean, the thing, this he goes through a lot of ups and downs, but they're usually just showing the downs, and it doesn't show a whole lot of up for Nick um, to the point where it's just you, you feel like he's a lost cause throughout the entire film. Um, so it would have been nice if they would have shown some of his ups instead of his consistent just beaten in the down over and over and over again. Um, so that's what really doesn't work for the film. So the movie as a whole kind of comes off uneven in a way. The performances are amazing. I mean, some of the best performances of the year... Um, and, and like I said, the struggle, the heartbreak struggle works great, but editing, pacing, certain character contexts, and like I said, only showing really the negative to, to Nick's um, addiction really kind of makes the film hard to watch at certain points and really, I think, uh, hurts the movie from really being one of the better movies of the year. So if you guys want to see a, a movie um, with, like I said, if you guys really want to see Steve Steve Carell and Timothy Chalamet knock it out of the park as these two characters, and you want to see what the struggle of drug addiction can do to, like I said, not only the addict but to the family involved, then I strongly suggest Beautiful Boy. If you guys are um, really just looking for a film, like just a good film overall, with a uh, great dramatic film um, that's potentially an Oscar favorite, you might also uh, really enjoy Beautiful Boy. But like I said, as much as there is great in this film, there's also a lot of negative or bad to the film as well. So like I said, it comes off very uneven as a whole. Um, I only recommend it for the performances and for people who are interested in addiction. But for everything else, I, I really can't 100% um, say go out of your way to see this film in general, if not just for Carell and Chalamet's performance. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and if you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you feel like this review is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as well as also all the social media outlets you see below. And until next time, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders.